This is Charting Cryptos, Commodities, and Currencies. Let's jump into these charts. We are going to look first at the 24-hour-a-day Bitcoin chart. And I've had to because it's such a sluggish sideways slide. I've gone ahead and set up our weekly trend line on the two-day chart. I do that only because I wanted to have something to show you. We can see that the upward move has slowly died and is rolling over. It is up right now about 1%. That is Bitcoin, but you can tell it's way off its highs over the last four weeks. Again, keep hoping that Bitcoin is going to give us a chart that we're going to be able to start following and practice trading off of. I keep hoping maybe it's getting a little better. But when you have things bump up your first week of a four-week up move and it pretty much reaches the high that week, makes it hard to feel confident about being able to grab any of the gold off the table. It's rolling back now. We'll see. You know, we noticed this latest big move, up, well, these latest moves up in Bitcoin after things bottomed out, just like the stock market did at the end of the year and then took off. We've seen it pull back twice, pulling back a little bit now throughout the course of the year, but each time it has bumped up a little bit higher. Now again, if the market goes down, what did we see? Well, we saw Bitcoin quite correlated with the market. It is not moving something like the S&P 500 versus SH, which is the inverse. It's not moving inverse of the market. It seems to move with the market uh, sometimes. Uh, but again, not anything that gives us, hey, put all your money in Bitcoin when the market crashes so you have something and not work in that way. So we'll continue to watch, wait and see, just hoping that we're going to be able to get some reliable moves here, particularly on our weekly chart. Move on to Ethereum, same kind of thing. I had to track it here. You see six two-day candles of down movement. That's actually 11 days because this is the first day of the latest one. So one, two, three, four, five, yes. So 11 days of down movement after reaching a peak back on the week beginning the 10th of July. So again, we don't like sideways slides. We like things to go like we see on the S&P 500 from green to red to green to red to green to red. That's what we like. And we keep hoping that we're going to get to that at some point. Now, a little better here on the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund. You can see that it does give us some opportunity to go from, you know, green to red to green to red. I mean, it's better, better. And what is it? Well, it is the top 10 cryptocurrencies weighted as per market share. So the big one is, of course, Bitcoin, followed by Ethereum and then the other eight. But again, a little bit better. This again is an ETF that tracks all 10. So it gives you another little delve into things, but it is looking more decent. So that is where we are as far as cryptocurrencies go. Let's move on to some commodities that I have curated for you. Corn. Now again, we saw corn pop up for four weeks and then down for three weeks, sort of. Again, when you've got so much of a play here in it and then it doesn't really go much below where the low was in that first week, doesn't get me excited in the down play. But we have seen it roll back over and start heading up over the last two weeks, maybe with that grain deal ending in Ukraine. Maybe that has something to do with it. So we do see corn heading up. What about the United States gasoline fund? For those of you who drive gas-powered cars, you can see that we hit our latest low back in May, early May, beginning of May. Since then, gas has just kept on ticking up. This week, a big up week for the U.S. gas fund. What about oil? Same kind of thing. Four weeks of up movement. We are getting up to where that last high was and things dropped off from there. So again, four weeks of decent up movement for oil. <coughs> Excuse me, don't know if any of you guys jumped into that at all. What about silver? We talked about Silver sort of hitting that bottom, going up again. Sort of looks like that Bitcoin chart, doesn't it? Captured its uh, high 
almost over these last three weeks in that first week. And then it's really slowed down. Up for the day, though, 1.28%, which is okay. We, are, we again, as we look at our two-day chart and our half-day chart, we see we are almost sitting on it on the two-day, but okay above it after two days of up movement on the half day. But it does look like silver's trying to continue to push on up wheat. Uh, again, after the wheat stopped there in Ukraine, we do see uh, wheat prices over the last two weeks going up. Uh, down for the day, though, 4.05%. But you can see that happened before. And then things popped right back up again. Soybeans, Again, they've been on a tear since they bottomed out. And, of course, the volume there was nice because it was above average. Then you had a doji, and then it took off. So decent play in soybeans. Now let's move from commodities, and we shall go to currencies. The first we'll go to is the euro. We saw the euro bottom out. Now, again, we had really nice higher-than-average volumes showing us, hey, this could be a bottom. Next week, we again saw things did not hit that low and then turned over. And slowly but surely over the last few weeks up until this week, heading up. Now this week, a little sketchy. We see red spinning top, down candle, and then a small candle forming the first day of this latest two-day candle. You can see where things were up on the euro for the day, but a definite weakening there. So we'll keep an eye on that. British pound, again, um, we saw where things turned over in the British pound and moved up for about five, six weeks. And then this week, again, pairing some of that off. So we're watching what's going on in both of those currencies, both the euro and the pound. We look at the Japanese yen, Two weeks of trying to get up and then just falling off that trend line again. Of course, the yen had had many, many, many weeks of down movement. So we'll keep an eye on that. We can see what happened on that last move. Sort of looks a little bit like this one. Popped up sideways and then rolled over. So we will be watching. And the Swiss franc. Again, it, like the other European currencies, both the pound and the euro, we see where it's been tracking and trying to move up, slowing down this week. That is where we are on cryptocurrencies, commodities, and real currencies. Again, other options, ETFs that you can sure look at, cryptocurrencies that you can sure look at. Fascinating to see what's going on in the real world, whether it's real things like commodities, whether silver, oil, gasoline, wheat, corn, sugar, coffee, whatever it might be. Those are interesting to watch. Put those, again, potentially in your quiver as things that you follow. Sure gives you a good idea as to what's actually going on in the world, along with checking out world currencies, whether it's the pound, the yen, the Swiss franc, or the euro. And we also have the Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar we look at sometimes when something's happening there. We always love to hear from you, my friends. CW at chartingwealth.com. God bless all the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.